Hi guys, today we're going to talk about atoms, elements and compounds and this is the first lesson in the unit Atomic Structure in the Periodic Table. So I've got some keywords down the left here, don't worry if you don't understand what they mean just yet, you will by the end of today. But we're going to start this off with just thinking about where would you find all the known elements, where are they represented? Well the answer to that is they're on something called the Periodic Table. You're going to learn about this as we go through this unit and we're going to learn about the contributions of scientists to this periodic table and also have a look at it and understand how to use it. Now when you look at the periodic table you'll see that every single element starts with a capital letter. This is how I know that you have a unique element. For example if you look at the bottom here you've got Mg which stands for magnesium. Now this Mg only has one capital letter, the M. So I know that that's one element. If I was doing another one, for example, sodium. Sodium is made up of two letters, but only one is a capital. So that means that that is an element, one element. We're going to have a look at some compounds now. These are different elements bonded together. So you're going to have a go at picking out how many elements there are in these compounds. And I want you to do this by looking for the capital letters. So every capital letter, remember, means a new element. So pause the video and have a go. Right. So the answer to the first one, how many capital letters do we have? Well, we have one and, and two. So there are two elements in there. This one here, where we have one capital here and another here. So again, two elements. The third one is the same. We only have two capital letters, so two elements. But the third one, now that's not two. We have one capital, two capital, three capital. So actually, in that compound there, there are three unique elements. So we talked about elements and compounds. We need to know what they mean. We need definitions of them. So I've got a list here. I've got a list of keywords on the left and definitions on the right. We're going to try and link these. So the first one, atom. Well, this is the smallest part of an element. It's what makes up everything in the world. Everything is made up of atoms. And when you get lots and lots of the same atoms together, they make elements. Now, if you've got different elements, uncombined, not bound to each other, okay, they're not chemically bonded, they're just, they can be a mixture of things, we call that a mixture. And the thing to think about is like Smarties. You've got different colours in there. They're all Smarties, but they're all mixed up. You've got blue ones, pink ones, orange ones. And if I said I just wanted the blue ones, it would be easy. You could pick them out. You wouldn't have to do a chemical reaction to separate them. You could just pick them out. And that's what we mean about not chemically joined. So a mixture, are elements or compounds mixed, but not chemically bonded. So the final one, compound, must be this one here two or more different elements chemically combined so you'd say combined in fixed proportions so that means we do now have different elements but instead of not being bonded they are bonded now they're bonded together in a fixed proportion we'll learn more about compounds in coming lessons so we talked about elements starting with a capital letter e.g magnesium so you're going to have a go at this. Make sure you're keeping up with us. So pause the video again. Make sure you can calculate the number of unique elements in that compound. And then we'll move on. Right. So you should have quickly counted. There's one capital, two capital, three capital letters. So three unique elements. The names of those elements, you've got magnesium, sulfur, and oxygen. Right, you're going to have a go now at a task, pretty much doing what we've done so far. You're going to write the chemical formula in. Now, these are all the symbols that I'm going to give you. For example, here are the chemical formulas that you are going to write in. You've got NaCl. And the chemical formula is the formula for representing a chemical. How do we know what the chemical's name is? Shorthand. It's a quick way of writing out its name. So NaCl. What are the elements in the compound? So I would like you to just look 
and name the elements in the compound. So I've got Na, which is sodium, and I've got Cl, which is chlorine. So you will need a periodic table for this. So once you've got the names of the elements in the compound, I want you to look at the number of each atom. How many of each element or each atom have I got in that compound, in the formula? So I haven't got any numbers either to the left or to the right. So what this tells me is I've only got one Na. And I've only got one Cl. The name for this is an extension. We're not going to cover that today, but if you want to have a go, because perhaps maybe you've seen this before, then by all means, have a go. But you'll have to wait for the answers in the next video. Let's have a look at one more. I'm going to do this one down here, okay? And then you can have a go at the others. So the chemical formula is H2O. What elements are in the compound? What are the names? So I've got one capital, two capitals. So I've got two elements. The first one is hydrogen. And the second one is oxygen. The final bit is the number of each atom in this formula. Well, this time I have got a number. This number is a little two, and it's to the right of the hydrogen. We need to know something about these numbers now. Those numbers only belong to the element directly to the left. So we have two hydrogens. Two hydrogens. Because there is no little number to the right of this element, that means, just like the other case, we only have one. Okay, so there's your two examples. I'll just recap them very quickly, and then I'd like you to copy out this table and have a go at the others yourself. So, look at the symbols, write down the elements using the periodic table, write down the names, and then work out how many atoms of each you have in the formula. If there is no little number to the right of the element, then there is only one of that element. If there is a little number to the right of that element, then you multiply the element by whatever the number is, in this case, two. So have a go at these seven questions using the table provided, and then we'll go through the answers. Right, so hopefully you will fill this in, and we've done NACL, we've done H2O, we've just got two, three, four, five, and six to do. Well, in this one, you've got magnesium and you've got oxygen. And because there's no little numbers, you've only got one of each. So this one here, you've got three elements. You've got hydrogen, phosphorus, and oxygen. And you've got three hydrogens, one phosphorus, and four oxygens. This one, you've got hydrogen, sulfur, and oxygen. Two hydrogens, one sulfur, and four oxygens. I should say at this point that I'm writing in the one so you can see what I'm talking about. You never include the one. If there's no, or no number there, that means one, like this example here. There's hydrogen and chlorine. But because there's no number either side, we have one hydrogen and one chlorine. Right, the final one. We have calcium, carbon, and oxygen. One calcium, one carbon, and three oxygens. Hopefully that's clear and you understand now how to identify elements in a compound. You are able to count the number of atoms of each element in a compound and you understand the definitions, atom, element, and compound. I'm going to leave you now with some questions to have a go at, and then check back in for the next video where we'll go through mixtures and we'll look at compounds in a little more detail.